Welcome back to Tune Up Fridays, where me and Dave Mack talk about everything about kitchens. And today we got an interesting topic here for you. We're going to talk about islands and why islands can be the centerpiece of your kitchen. And so many people are always wondering about, hey, should I do my island a little different color or we should do an island anyways altogether? It's a it's a pretty big question sometimes when it comes to kitchen design. So we just want to kind of want to get into what's available out there, you know, what you can do, the different trends that we're seeing as well with islands. And the one thing that I'm seeing the most of, and I'm sure you know that Dave Mack as well, that different colors. People want to do different colors for the island versus what they do on their cabinets. The one that I see the most of is the white and um, uh, an accented color like blue or gray. That's the biggest thing. So people will do a light color on their kitchen cabinets, something like this maybe, or even, you know, a white, the white shaker is one of the most popular ones. And then they'll do something darker for their island that kind of brings that attention onto that. So that's really cool. But I know you have another trick up your sleeve that you want to talk about. So let's get into that one. <laughs> Well, you know, when you talk about islands, I, I think the first thing is that's important is, does it fit? Yeah. Does it fit your space? Do right. you have, you know, we t uh, minimum walking paths all the way around that island? And, you know, in the, in the, the world of kitchen design, the minimum path is 36 inches. Mm. However, that makes your kitchen kind of a one butt space is what I call it. Mm. You know, you don't have room, really convenient room for two people to pass very well. But if you can extend those pathways uh, around your island to 42 or even 48 inches, now you've got a pretty yeah. functional space, especially yeah. if you've got a household where you've got two cooks. That's true. And uh, that's gonna be kind of important. I would say too that, you know, if you're really interested in an island, you, there's another question to ask yourself and that is, if you entertain a lot, mm. where do you want your guests when they're at your house? Yeah, where, and, the, where are they gonna be sitting on the island? Right. Where are they, yeah, are you gonna have room for them to sit at the island? Right. And if that's the case, you know, they're gonna be in your space. Mm. And there's a big difference between an island and a peninsula. Yeah. Because a peninsula will keep your guests right. on the other side because right. you can put the food over there and that's right. where they're going to be. Gotcha. So think about that too. But also, what are you gonna do with, to make this island look different or unique yeah. you know we talk a lot about visual textures in kitchen design the island is a huge one and so what you do with that in terms of finishing off the ends of the island that, right. that you're going to see what are you going to see when you walk in the room you know there's no right wrong or right answer to how busy right. and cool that countertop is on the yeah, island too that's true. you know there's there's just a, a ton of options out there but that's a really you know, we talk about putting the jewelry on things. Yep. <clears throat> That's where the island is really right. comes into play. And, right. you know, the, it, whether you do a counter overhang, you extend cabinets out on one, you know, the ends, you have posts, you, you know, I've done shiplap kinds of finishes right. on the ends, you know, whatever it is. There, there's so many different things an island can do for you. Yeah, yeah. And, and another big question I'm, I'm sure that, that comes up is, are we going to have any appliances in your island? That's true. A cooktop. Yep. Under counter microwave, you know, a sink, yeah. dishwasher, you know, all of those kinds of things. So, so really, the island is can be the centerpiece yes. uh, of your kitchen. It can be a main focal point for serving your guests when they're when they're around, right. or not, depending on what you got going on. Yeah. So. Yep. No, that makes sense. I mean, I think if you have the space to put an island in your kitchen, it's probably one of the best things that you can have. I have lived in a kitchen without an island and I've lived in a kitchen with an island and I can tell you I can't go back. It's just not possible, right? Because an island is just such a, it's the centerpiece of the kitchen. This is where you can do, you know, in my household, we do most of the prep on our island. You know, we do have a sink in our island, too. So that kind of uses, uh, you know, uses a lot of that space. But we still have enough space to do our prep, you know, get our stuff there ready. And then sometimes when it's just me and my wife, we'll sit around the island and have our dinner. Right. So it's 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 an all in one type of focal area, which I really like to have. And, you know, I'd like to say that uh, people can kind of feel a little pressure to go with the trend to make the island look a certain way. But again, I always say it is exactly how you feel in the kitchen that you should, that should drive your decision rather than what's trending out there and having the pressure of making the kitchen look a certain way. If that feels right to you, I think that's got to be the right way to do. If you don't have an island, 
I know I get this question once in a while, Dave Mack, and that is, hey, I don't have an island. Would a floating island be an okay option for, for us? I'm um, not a huge fan of those, you know, the ones that are on the wheels, you can kind of move them around. Not a huge fan just because they're not situated, they're not, you know, they're not bolted down to the ground, which makes them kind of convenient, but at the same time, not part of your kitchen. What's your thought on, on those floating islands? <laughs> <laughs> I, you knew I was going to throw a, a curveball at you, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to hit me on this one. Uh, <laughs> I've done one floating island. Right. I had to engineer that island very specifically because your right. center of gravity can be a yeah. little goofy. So I literally extended the backside of that island to change to increase the footprint. Oh. So you know, if somebody's pushing that island across the floor, right, uh, it doesn't accidentally get caught and roll over. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there, there's a big safety concern. Um, right. The company that I was involved with at the time was not very happy with me when mm -hmm. I designed this because they had to build it. <laughs> but in the end, it turned out beautiful. Nice. But what I found after the fact, mm -hmm. this happened to be the same client that I did the platter on the wall. Oh, wow. okay. The same client had that too? <laughs> yeah. Cool. We did a lot of innovative things. <laughs> right, right. Um, she never really moved that island much. The whole okay. intent was you could set it up on the side as a peninsula when you oh. wanted it and then slide it out in the middle. And we had a, you know, it was about this size and we right. had counter seating space. It, you know, I would, I would say there are fewer benefits right. to doing a floating island and yeah. trying to make that work there just because they're problematic. Yeah. yeah. When you're talking about a countertop that weighs 17 pounds a square foot sitting on that island, your engineering has to be right. Because if somebody's yeah. pushing on one end and put out, putting a lot of torque on those cabinets, you know, right, right. you got to be careful with that. So I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, in general, I think we can both agree that we would both recommend if you can put a, you know, a, a, a fixed island, then go ahead and put a fixed island in your kitchen. If you already have an island and you're looking to reface, <laughs> there's a lot of different options that you can go with. Stay away from the floating islands. They're probably not the best thing for you. But if you don't have the space, maybe getting one temporarily might be the way to go. Yeah, I, I would run quickly from a <laughs> floating island. <laughs> gotcha. We'll see you next time. If you have any questions about anything related to kitchens, let me let us know in the comments and we'll do a full video about it, talking everything, you know, talking anything and everything when it comes to kitchen design. See you next time.